who are you and what did you do to my regular co-host? What? Wait. The, m my name is uh, Tucker Willem, and uh, this is the, uh, the stash I'm growing for uh, Movember this year. Yeah. So we as a company are participating in Movember. Yep. Yeah. Um, Fifteen guys shaved their beards and are growing a mustache. Yeah. To collect money and uh, raise awareness. Raise awareness for for, uh, uh, for men's health, prostate cancer. Yeah. Yeah, so if you can spare anything, there's a link in the description where you can donate to uh, our team. Yes. Highly appreciate it. Very much. And uh, if you just want to lurk and see what our faces look like, you can you also can <laughs> check, out <laughs> check out our November page. Yeah. And uh, next month for 8.4 release, we'll uh, hopefully we'll have, uh, have a big stash. Yeah. Yeah. Before we get started, uh, we want to uh, welcome all the new MVPs. Yeah. There's been a couple of new uh, introductions to the group. Uh, a lot of the new uh, MVPs you might know this. Uh, you might know them from the uh, Mendix forum. You might have seen them in the community. Yep. I think all of the new MVPs uh, very welcome. Great and additions. They were already a big contribution to uh, to the community. Yep. And I think making them MVP will only enable them to uh, do a better job at it, yep. an even better job. So, welcome. Uh, special shout out to our own uh, Maarten. Maarten Bongers. Well yes. deserved. And uh, uh, totally agree. Yeah. Hope you enjoy. All kidding aside, my name is Willem van Zandvoort. And I'm Paul Ketelaars. And today we are taking a look at Mendix 8.3. Let's go. Return nothing from Java and JavaScript. It's, uh, it never really bothered mm. me that much, I have to say. Yeah. I guess it's, uh, it's a nice... Maybe more kind of the lighter thingy. Yeah. It's, um, it's, it's nice to have. Yeah, so you can now return nothing. Yeah, instead of a true and not use the variable. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. fine. One thing I do like, though, is the, the click action for a container. So mm -hmm. there was a widget that does the same thing. Uh, yeah. Because out of the box, a container is just an empty div, basically. Mm -hmm. And with this improvement, you can now specify an on-click action for your containers. So the end user will be able to click on the entire container, so not just the contents in that container. Okay. Uh, which is pretty cool, I would say. It's, it, it's yeah, yeah. user experience-wise, it's a, it's a big plus, I would say. And no longer Agreed. need, uh, you no longer need the clickable container widget. Yeah, that's exa exactly what, uh, what I was going to say, because before it was possible. Yeah. We, we used it in our current project as well. Yeah. Um, this removes the, the need for that widget, which I think is, is good. Always good, less yeah. widgets, the less widgets. Yeah. <laughs> Next thing we have on our list is building blocks for native mobile widgets. I guess, um, yeah, what should we say about this? It speaks a bit for itself, right? I, I guess it does. Uh, it's like you said uh, in our prep meeting yesterday. Yeah. <laughs> It's good to see that Atlas UI is still being supported, even yep. with the native, uh, new native features. Mm -hmm. So uh, good on them, I would say. Yeah. I, uh, I think for people who have less experience with UI, I think building blocks are especially uh, useful. Yep. You mentioned that you rarely use them in our current projects. Mm, yeah, I do. Um, I, I, I kind of see where you're coming from, because you have to have it in your system that you, yeah. you can use building blocks. Um, but especially for new developers, if they start learning with building block from, from the moment they start with uh, Studio Pro. That's true. I think it's a, it's a really big benefit. Yeah. And it's nice to see uh, uh, patterns in, in an application, yeah, stuff that, that, that the user uh, is, is used to. Yeah, that's, that's one of the big, uh, big things, I would say. Um, one of the things that we uh, saw coming from the ID form, I think, uh, yeah. I think two years ago, actually, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> is uh, the ability to configure the width of layout grids so per device type. So you can have your uh, um, desktop, tablet, and phone uh, can have specific w weights yeah. at attached to them, uh, especially useful for the UXers in, uh, in the team to get a better overview, I think, of uh, how, how your application will behave. Yep. It also works nice in the view mode, we noticed. Yeah, true. So, so that's, a, that's a big plus. If that wouldn't work, De then... Uh, desi design mode. Design mode, sorry. Funny thing, when I w looked at the ID, I noticed that uh, Danny actually replied 
uh, two years ago mm -hmm. that it was already possible in the well then web modeler. Yeah. Uh, so it took them two years to port this functionality from the web modeler to Studio Pro. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, I, I don't know what my point is, but <laughs> it, it, it took them long <laughs> enough, I would say. Yeah. <laughs> Agree. <laughs> okay, let's carry on. Yep. One of the big new things. Uh, one of the big new improvements, actually, they labeled it an improvement, which I get because it is an improvement because it was already there, but they redid, they completely redid the entire changes pane. So they built it from the ground up. It's the awesome. first thing on the version control roadmap. So it's cool to see they have a version control roadmap. Yes. Um, yeah, they completely redid the changes pane, and if you want to run into any issues with the new uh, changes pane, you can revert back to the old one okay. in your uh, preferences window. So that's that's great. That's cool. Yeah, um, we all know that with new releases, new features, things might not always work yeah. as well as we hope. So it's a great thing that they uh, they built this. Yeah. There's, there's an out. There's an out, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and basically what the, the new changes pane is, uh, you get more detail with less clicks. Mm -hmm. And because some of the things don't resolve, uh, don't result in conflicts anymore, for example, okay. moving a microflow activity in a microflow yeah. could result in a conflict. That doesn't happen anymore, so there's less conflicts. Less conflicts. Always good. That's, uh, that's the gist of it. Okay. Sounds great. Yeah. So Can't wait what the rest of the roadmap uh, Yeah, what do you holds. think uh, is would be the ultimate result of, uh, of this? It's for me, uh, we mentioned this be before in our, in our talk, um, GitHub diffing. Yeah. I mean, if something like that would be possible, then resolving conflicts like, like would make life so much easier. <laughs> yeah. 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 So yeah. True. Can't wait to uh, to see what what this first step on the version control list uh, will bring. Yeah. Microflow search support. Yes. Um, we already saw a move towards being able to do the pagination uh, yeah. in, in Microflow, using Microflows for your data grids. Yeah. Um, that functionality has sort of been, been extended yeah. by now also being able to search using a Microflow. Yeah, so uh, yeah, like you said, it's an extension on the, the previous release mm -hmm. where you could um, uh, page and sort with yeah. the Microflow and now you can search as well. As well. Yeah. So that's, that's, uh, that's Pretty cool that they uh, they extended this functionality. Agreed, especially and for integrations. Yeah. We also see a uh, improvement in pluggable widgets. They can now contain other pluggable widgets. Yeah. It's so you can you can nest widgets now. Yeah. S sounds very useful. Yeah. Uh, we haven't built widgets in, uh, in in quite a while, so I don't really know. What kind of impact this would make, but uh, in the uh, blog by Danny Rust, he mentioned uh, the ability to, for example, take a group box and uh, extend the functionality. Okay, that's that's pretty cool. So yeah, so you have all these these building blocks, kind of like a snippet in in, in my yeah. mind, and you can reuse that functionality and extend it uh, any way you want. Can't wait what uh, the community comes up with next. Yeah, yeah, I agree with uh, with his conclusion in his blog. Can't wait to see what kind of yeah. widgets this will bring to the App Store. Yeah. Because also um, in terms of Atlas and, and reusability and uh, patterns, I think it's great that we don't all keep building the exact same thing, just a tiny bit different, yeah. but reuse what's already there. Yeah. And yeah, it's a great, great improvement. The Make It Native app has received an update, and I think it's a it's a really good one. It's uh, it's on the improvements list, and, yep. and it's definitely an improvement because what we can now do is we can uh, debug styling. Yeah, yeah. That's Which a, that's a nice way to put it. Yeah, right. That's that's <coughs> great. Uh, for me, uh, when I built my first native app, it felt like a kind of a black box because mm. it wasn't like a hybrid app that you could just plug into your uh, into your, onto your laptop and then see the styling in, uh, in yeah. an inspector pane. And now it is possible. Yeah. And it's and ha and how. Yeah, and how it's funny, <laughs> right? Yeah, it's 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 crazy um, because we had to download React DevTools mm -hmm. in our Chrome browser, which is 
just available in the Chrome Web Store. Mm -hmm. um, and when you run the app on your phone, you get a you can shake your device, get a little pop up, enable remote JS debugging, and then a browser on your laptop opens up with the Element Inspector. That's pretty cool. All we need, right? Yeah. So better looking native apps. Yeah. Can't wait to yeah. see. As Danny mentioned, uh, well, the, the title of Danny's blog post this month was uh, a true delight. A true delight. Yeah. And uh, that sh that that shows the mm -hmm. delighters list is uh, bigger than all the other lists combined. <laughs> yeah. Um, so here's a couple of them. Yep. The top container when you edit the tab container, the focus is now actually on the caption of the tab container instead of the name. Mm -hmm. So you can quickly start typing. Yep. Yep. Uh, when you export a module, you can now quickly select all or deselect all the dependencies, mm -hmm. which was already possible with Control A and Space, but eh, that's why it's a lighter. It's a good addition. Yeah. yeah. You can. Uh, one of the best things I think is the dissolve slash wrap container. Uh, it's perfect, so you can dissolve uh, a container by right-clicking and saying dissolve container, um, and then it disappears. Yeah. And uh, you but can do the yeah. The contents of that container will still be of there. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's the the main reason to use this. Mm -hmm. And the other way around, you can wrap elements yeah. in a container. Perfect. Yeah, and a native mobile app can now detect your system's dark mode. So okay. if you have enabled dark mode in your application, and your system, your Android or iPhone, has dark mode on, your app will automatically start in dark mode as well. Perfect. That's a user thingy. Yeah, we're big fans of dark mode, so. Yeah. <laughs> Good delighter. A fallback text for when, uh, when your text template uh, has no value. Yeah. Awesome. It's uh, one of the things you didn't know you needed. Yeah, <laughs> I, I kind of did, but yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, and now when you delete a, a language from your project, all the translations get deleted as well. Makes sense. Sure. Yeah. yeah. You can now right-click a Java action in your Project Explorer and go to the uh, source file. That's Th nice. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> and one thing that should have been possible a long time ago, mm -hmm. uh, you can now drop a compatible microflow or nanoflow on a data view, list view, or data grid. Yeah. So it and it will uh, become a data source. That's awesome. Yeah. It has to have a... Uh, uh, Return object to make it compatible. Sure. Yeah, makes sense. And then, then it works. Yeah, great. So there's a new view mode in town. Uh, you can still uh, press F11 to to get the regular uh, view mode mm -hmm. where um, the I, I would say the top bar disappears and uh, all the docking panes they they go to the side. So if you have a, a rather large microflow, you can look at it. Well. Full screen. Full screen, <laughs> exactly. And then you have the distraction-free mode, which is a new thing, which uh, kind of works like pressing F11 in a browser. It makes the entire Studio Pro full screen. So oh. your Windows bar will disappear, and you can work distraction-free. OK, that's yeah, okay. pretty cool. cool. I can uh, see this working. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Um, the last letter we're going to mention is you can now add a description to your REST parameters, which mm. will be included in the Swagger documentation. Perfect. Yeah, yeah. cool. No we issues. We have to mention, I think, one. Yeah. It's because it's, uh, it's, it's a pretty killing known issue. Yeah, in, in terms of... Uh, Quickly uh, building applications. Yeah, all of the lighters make our life more easy. And yeah. then we get, uh, we get a, known a killer uh, known <laughs> issue. <laughs> yeah. it's, it doesn't result in an error. That, that's nice. So, so, so let's talk about what, what is the issue yeah. first. So um, I use this all the time. Mm -hmm. uh, you can normally drag a microflow from your Project Explorer into another microflow to yeah. create the call microflow activity mm -hmm. with all the, the right microflow selected. Yeah. Um, that's currently not possible. Uh, so the workaround is create the activity manually, select call microflow, and select the to call microflow. Yeah, that's yes. a that's a lot of work. It's <laughs> yeah, it's 
is that annoying that it would make me not use 8.3? Same. Uh, because we use submarket flows all the time yeah. and not being able to, to drag and drop. Yeah. Uh, you see how, how delighted we were with being able to drag a microflow onto a data view. And then you can drag a microflow into a <laughs> microflow. It's, yeah, yeah. It's, it's weird. Um, like I said, it's, it's great that it doesn't result in an error, because if that would have been the case. We've also seen this before. Yeah. Um, but it's, uh, like you said, this is one of my reasons not to use 8.3. Yeah. It's a harsh. Vertic, but it's, a, it's, it's harsh. It's the way it is. Yeah. So this is this is hotfix worthy in my opinion. Mm -hmm. Absolutely true. Okay. Anywho. Yeah. That brings us to the verdict. Yeah. Yeah. I already mentioned it. Um, for me personally, a uh, lot of delighters. Mm -hmm. uh, great improvement on the changes pane. Um, but the known issue is so big, I wouldn't use 8.3. I completely agree. Yeah, it's... Uh, Q sat trombone. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's, it's, it's not that bad. I mean, 8.3 is, is still a good release. I think we kind of got spoiled by the previous releases, new uh, features, yeah. because there were so many. Yeah. And but we, s we, we noticed that in the stability as well, right? Mm -hmm. Because a lot of new features, but a couple of releases got retracted. Yeah. So my hope is that even though there's a known issue, this um, this release with less new features and more fixes and delighters uh, makes this release a, a, a stable version. Yeah. Something to to build upon yeah. and continue Manix 8 on. Yeah. That would be uh, that would be great. Agree. So mm. to conclude. Please hotfix the known <laughs> issue. <laughs> yes, please do. And I would <laughs> definitely use 8.3. Agree. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>